Hi, this is James Garden, the Cine Tech Geek, and I'm at CinemaCon 2019 with Christy. Now, I've got Brian, Brian Claypool and Alan here, and they're going to take us through some of the new things that are happening at Christy. And obviously, this is uh, a big year for Christy in terms of um, really jumping in headfirst into the laser with their primary laser um, product behind them here. So, I'm going to let them talk about that uh, to start off with and just see if I can lead them on to tell us what they think is what's going to happen in the future with Christy and, and uh, where they're going to take us, considering, and I'll, you'll talk about this later. DCI announcing new generations and new jumps in quality for theatrical presentation. But first, please guys, tell us about what's happened in the last year with your new projector and where that's taking us. Well, there's actually two new projectors, so maybe uh, what we'll do is, Alan's been close to the, um, the 2309 projector, which is really meant for um, a smaller screens in the portfolio right, okay. using RGB. Uh -huh. And then the big news of this show for us is the announcement of the 4440 and the 4450. So these are projectors that are around 54,000 lumens at the top end, can support contrast ratios up to 6,001. It's really made to reinforce that white label PLF format that exhibitors are still at a thirst for to try to differentiate themselves away from each other. So finally, we've been able to bring RGB illumination into that class of projector at a cost that's about half as much as the first generation of RGB products that were meant for the PLF applications at that light level. Uh, these projectors can also do 4K at 120 frames per second. Uh, so if um, uh, films are released in these higher frame rate formats, the PLF installations utilizing these systems will be able to support those. And with contrast levels of 6,000 to 1, it's at a point of sharpness and image quality that we've not been able to get to. Wow, so uh, 6,000 to 1 already in these products. Yeah, correct. In, all, in the whole range, even the small ones? So not, not so much on the small ones, but I'll kind of talk a little bit about the, the 4330 here. So this 4330 is another new product that we, we introduced, but I wouldn't call it an overly new product. It's, it's an extension of the 4325. So exactly a year ago at CinemaCon, we had one product in the lineup, which was the 4325 RGB. And uh, now, as you can see, we have uh, five products on display here. But the 4330 specifically, um, it, the only real change here is is around speckle reduction. Right. So we've 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 evolved the, the the LOS building block of the real laser tech, of the real laser platform to reduce speckle and between the 4325 and this product here, it's probably about 35% speckle reduction from from the first out product, which allows now exhibitors to to go into higher gain uh, silver screens for for 3D applications and and, okay. and basically you know basically put speckle. Uh, so you're put, pretty much lines. putting speckle to bed when it comes to laser. Yes. That's been a, a yeah. big um, talk about laser and speckle, but everyone and uh, well, most exhibitors seem to really have a, a nailed that thing down. And it's good to hear that you have too. And uh, I've got a lot of B-roll of your like, big new range here. It's very impressive and a totally new look, um, which is good. Um, but um, what else is happening um, in, in other aspects? Um, What's happening in your, your media block area? Was there something? Was, what's changing there? So on the media block side, we've uh, this is this is still based on our CineLife. All these projectors here are based on our CineLife platform, which is you can think of it as Christie Series Three. Uh, we introduced a, a media block in the Series Two platform. We have the same uh, an, an evolution of the media the second Series Two media block on CineLife uh, projectors. Uh, moving forward, we're you know we're we're taking advantage of strategic partnerships with with other third-party uh, R&D manufacturers, especially when we're talking about 4K 120 capabilities into our yeah. That's that's you need the new projects. there's new backplanes so, and new capabilities you know, that come let, with that. Isn't let some of the R&D manufacturers do what they do best, and and then strategic partnerships are you know are, they they bring a lot of value to us as well to to achieve you know, we're focusing on the on the on the core projection technology to achieve 4K 120 and allowing. Uh, IMB manufacturers to push the boundaries of what what they can do on that side. So it's it's uh, uh, moving forward. I believe you know we'll, we'll all, I think we're, we're always going to have an IMB offering, more of a, a value add offering for for mainstream exhibition, and then relying on third parties to uh, for the, uh, the the more full the feature rich. Uh, IMB platform. So, in, before you mentioned you've got the 6,000 to 1 with the new laser projectors, so do you feel that, that um, whatever happens in terms of the next generation of quality in terms of black levels and peak luminance, that you're already in a position to address what DCI eventually decides? For some degrees, yes, and some degrees, no. I mean, there's, there's also new 4K devices that are coming onto the market, but as you're probably well aware, last year every single movie was distributed as as 2k yeah. so in terms of image quality the human visual system is still much more attuned to things like higher levels of contrast 
better image clarity, what we call MTBF and uh, M, uh, modulation transfer function through the lenses, getting clarity of the optics. RGB allows us to do some things with those designs that we weren't able to do with Xenon to be able to gather more clarity in the image. That's why the full 2K line is actually still providing a very powerful value proposition because of the lack of actual 4K content onto the market. So the devices that are here that are 2K.98 based and 2K.69 based can go up to 3,000 to one contrast with all of the existing lens suites without having to do anything special, just as a result of moving from Xenon-based technology to RGB technology, and trying to bring those levels of improvements to the market that allows for the improvement to be recognized as an audience, but still keeping the price somewhat in line with the exhibition's general business that they have now, is really what we're trying to do with every aspect of the portfolio that we're doing with RGB. Uh, with regards to electronics, we've kind of set together a monster here. With digital, anything is possible. So the amount of content that you can produce certainly has gone through the roof as a result of other revolutionary changes in the business plans for studios and, and streaming services, et cetera. Uh, but for us, we have to maintain compatibility with all of the Series 2-based systems that were deployed so that the exhibitors have the choice to use whatever they want. If they want to continue to use their own existing servers, they can do that. If they want to take advantage of some of the higher capabilities, be it 4K 120 or other media block system designs, it, it presents an environment that we've not had in cinema before. So evolving our electronics format from CineLife to CineLife Plus allows us to work with the rest of the industry to make sure that uh, other manufacturers can have that compatibility to bring their improvements into the ecosystem as well. And I think it's a very important time for this discussion to be had too because um, VPS are ending. A lot of people are going to be turning over projectors in the next couple of years. And it's good to see that the, you know, um, there is a definite jump in quality and something that is a little bit future-proof uh, in terms of what has been developed. So it's an interesting year at CinemaCon. I haven't been to CinemaCon in a number of years. I'm very, very happy to come this year because there's definitely a lot to talk about and to discuss. And it's only through these discussions that uh, the exhibitors get to understand and know where they're going into the industry and, and have, a, have a say in what they're going to do. And, and I'm glad that you guys come and discuss with, with me and I can t take these discussions because my discussions typically I try and pick some of the, the, the little pressure points that we need to discuss at the time and you always come back with some very good and thoughtful and considered answers and I hope, um, I hope my viewers appreciate that. Um, and before we go, is there anything that I've missed that we should discuss? Well, you mentioned the, the, the DCI uh, revision spec notice. I'm not sure what we want to put a name on it, but I'm glad that the industry continues to look at ways of evolving. Uh, well, I'm, I'm just glad that uh, I've been f flagging this for quite some time because I always thought the jump in the domestic would eventually for force us to consider it in the theatrical. And the fact that we're talking about it, that's all I really care because that means it'll come. It takes, things, take a long, things take a long time in cinema land, but it, it is in the pipe and we'll see something in between two to four years, I'd say, my guess. But who's, who's to know? It might happen sooner, it might happen later. But I'm just glad, because I've seen some amazing um, new technologies and some experimental projection, and I'm, I can't wait to see it in every cinema in the world. Well, we can't wait to be able to bring it to you. Absolutely. Uh, but we hope that the industry will participate with the manufacturers and the exhibitors and the studios to create specifications that manufacturers can actually bring to market I think at a price point that exhibitors that's why can I think this implement I did their this. business plan. That's what DCI is doing. This is so that we can come together to decide on what that is. So, anyway. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank thanks. you for your time, as always. And that's James Gunn, the New Tech Geek, at uh, CinemaCon 2019 at the Christie booth. Bye for now.